So in this final video of the series, we're going to kind of do a little bit of poking around together and we're going to put together a lot of the stuff that we've already learned um, and yeah, just make one kind of web application out of it. So I'm going to kind of take us back to this code base and I'm just going to go ahead and delete uh, all the stuff that I have. So I'm going to delete this app.js file and empty out this index.js file. The one thing that we haven't really covered yet, we've done a lot on requiring and exporting, but we haven't covered yet how to um, install things from npm. If you want to learn a lot about the command line tool, I have a whole series on Nodecast about it, but for now we're just going to go ahead and cover some of the basics. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, in your directory here, which is my directory where I just have this index file, you're going to want to type an npm init. And this is basically saying it's going to create, I'm going to pass in this so it doesn't ask me a bunch of questions, but it's going to create this package.json file. And that package.json file is basically going to let us keep track of all the different cool packages that we're using. So let's go online and go to npmjs.com and find a popular package that we can use. Um, there's a couple of different ones on here. I think that for now it would be nice to stick with a web application. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use Express out of here. It's a minimalist web framework. Um, cool. So I click on Express and the first thing that's going to be at the top of a lot of these is installation. You're going to see npm install and then the name. And the name to npm install will also always be the name of the package here. So if it doesn't say installation, you just type npm install this. Um, so there's a couple of things you can do with npm install. The thing that we're going to do is we're going to save it to our package.json so that our package.json knows about it and knows that it's a dependency of this thing we're building. So I'll do npm install express, but then I'm going to type in dash dash save. And again, if you want to get more comfortable with these tools, I highly recommend you check out my series. So doing that command does two things. One, if I ls, there's a new folder, node modules, and inside node modules is express and all of its dependencies. The other thing that it does is if we go ahead and peek at, actually let's use this, the package.json, where it was empty, now it has a dependency on Express. This is really cool because now if I just send you just my index file on my package.json and you type npm install, we don't have to bundle up all this code and send it along. You, know, you don't have to like send this or check it into Git or something like that. We just ignore all this and then uh, all your coworkers can just npm install. So that's nice. So we've got Express, now we've got an empty index. Uh, JS. So using Express is really similar to that HTTP client we built, except it gives you a bunch more stuff after you have it built. So you can do const express equals require express. And this is an important place to take note because remember I said that with the core modules we could do a require statement without installing anything. But express is not a core module, so this won't work unless you do that npm install. It'll only work because there is an express folder to require. Uh, just worth noting. Um, and then uh, it's got a syntax where you can do, as people call it like app or something like that. So this returns, just, actually let's poke through because we just kind of covered this. So we had just covered the multiple ways of exporting things. So this module exports and then it requires its own lib-express. So we go to lib-express and we see all this stuff going on and it exports a bunch of different stuff. So it exports uh, create application, and create application is a function. So hopefully you can kind of follow how I did that, right? Let's let's kind of walk through it one more time. So what does require express do? Well, it'll if it's not in a global package like HTTP, it'll look in your node modules folder and it'll find express. And then from express we can see there's the index.js, the main file. And if there are multiple JS files, we could look in its package.json and we could see, let's see, where is this? we could see that index.js is the main file here. So we look in its index.js and nothing really exciting there. It just requires back in the lib directory the express file. So we'll open the lib directory, we'll go to the express file, and then here we see uh, exports module exports equals create application. So really this is requiring create application. Well what's that? It's a function. So this is returning a function, basically. So if we want to actually start the Express app, we now have to run Express like that, call it like a function. Uh, another way that you could do this, it's less common, but you could do app equals require Express, and then just put these params on here. 
because that's also calling it like a function. But we're going to do it this way because this is the way that you'll typically see it in the wild. Um, very similarly to the HTTP server, we'll do app.listen. We'll give it a port like 8080. And it also takes a callback function just like we did before. Console log application is listening at HTTP colon colon local host colon 8080. Great. So now if I go ahead and I run node on index.js, get the same thing. And no surprise, I don't have anything here. Uh, it has, cannot get. So this is a, a, a nice helpful error from expressing, you know, you don't have a route, you don't have anything listening at slash. So the last piece of the puzzle here is we'll do app, which is our express app, dot get slash, and I'm going to walk through this in one second. Function, just as before, we have a request and a response. And we can do something like res send hello world. So let's save this and test it just to make sure it's working. I'm going to kill that and restart it. Uh, oops. Response, not res. Response send hello world. And there we go, hello world. Okay, so this looks a little bit different, but really it's not so different. So there's two arguments here. There's the path right and then there's the callback function what happens when that path gets hit the other thing that it's cool to check out that this gives you over http is um, all the different http verbs so for those that haven't done api development before there's like get put delete post um, all these different things you'd want so if you had a form that submit to the slash you could have a totally separate route really nice and cleanly when route receives a post request right so you have like it receives a get request do this it receives a post request do this um, so that's really nice and they've got a ton of stuff in the express docs they also have a nice website um, but I just kind of wanted to cover a few more things while we're kind of hacking through so we've got this hello world which is pretty sweet um, but let's say we wanted to I'm gonna close these node modules kind of go back into this like lorem ipsum thing that we had right um, so we had a file it was you know called like uh, reading.txt or something like that and we just went ahead and copied like this paragraph of lorem ipsum and we can turn on soft wrap to see what it looks like um, so combining what we've done before we know we can do something like const fs equals require fs right uh, and then we can go ahead and do uh, what was it like const text equals fs dot it's like read file let's see if I get that right or not uh, oh I think I saved this in the node modules folder by accident I did I want this out here in the main app Cool, reading.txt, great. Um, read file reading.txt, and it's asynchronous, so it has a callback with an error and some data. And I think we can just return the data to string. Uh, in a real application, we'd want to check for, uh, we can just do it here, if error. Um, and then I think it was like, let me look for a second here. We can just throw the error for now, uh, and then otherwise return data to string. And then for the response, instead of just sending it that, we can send it text. Let's see what this is going to do for us. So kill the app and restart it. Looks good so far. And then refresh the page here, and we got a problem. All right, so this isn't working, but that's actually a good opportunity for us. So now let's go ahead and let's use our debugger. So I'm gonna plant a debugger statement right in here, and I'm gonna control C, and I'm gonna node debug index.js, and it's gonna pause here, continue, and now it's listening at 8080, and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh, and it stops at debugger. So let's see what data is. We'll go into the REPL and type data, and we'll type data.toString. So there it is right there, right? So data.toString is what's being returned. 
Okay, so then I'm going to control C back into the deb debugger. And I'm going to see what text is set to. Text is not defined, so I'm going to continue. Go into the REPL again and see if text is set there. It is not. Text equals FS read file. Ah, I see. Okay. We ran into this earlier. So what's going on here is that the code is technically correct, but uh, since this is an asynchronous function, right, it's sending text. Uh, so basically what's happening here, for those that aren't super familiar with JavaScript, um, you know, catches me all the time, is this is going to get hoisted, this declaration. So it'll actually turn into something like, you know, like const, uh, you know, text equals, you know, it'll be empty. And then here it's going to be actually set. Um, and then this async operation kicks off, and then before it has a chance to finish, we send down text, which is empty. Uh, so there's no error, um, it's just being sent down empty. So the two things we could do here, uh, we can make it synchronous, which isn't really what we want to do, or instead of doing this return, we can go ahead and we can kind of eliminate this altogether, and we can just move this response up into here. Um, so what I want to do is get rid of that debugger. If there's an error, throw it. Otherwise, actually just go ahead and send the data to string right down to the server. So I can kill the app and run node on it again and go ahead and refresh the page and boom, there's all my lorem ipsum. So again, with this async stuff and the more complex your app gets, the harder it is, but it's really great, really uh, efficient for your server, but do remember that you know async really matters because you can't just do things in a linear fashion like I was trying to do. Um, so we can read in this file, uh, and then in the callback we can do this. We could also use JavaScript promises, which I have other videos on, to kind of make async a little bit more manageable. Um, but yep, so hopefully that combine a good amount of stuff. We've got our reading uh, file stream in here. We've got some cool async stuff. We use the debugger when we got stuck. Uh, we're using a package from npm, it's just that easy. Um, saved it to our package.json, and we've got this beautiful website with this meta lorem ipsum about it. So I hope you enjoyed the series. If there's anything that you'd like me to cover that I didn't, please let me know in the comments, uh, and I'd be happy to make a video. Thank you.